Hey guys, how's it going? Tifty here, and today we have another Demoman 101 guide for you. Today we're going to be talking about the Sticky Bomb Launcher and using it in direct combat. In previous videos we've looked at traps, we've looked at sticky jumping, sticky sniping, hitting pipes, so these are all topics we're not going to be talking about today. Instead we're going to be focusing on using this weapon in one-on-ones, in direct combat and in various other ways. Sticky spamming, demo spam, M1M2, whatever you want to call it, and however much you love or hate it, using the Sticky Bomb Launcher in combat is a fundamental and invaluable part of the Demo Man's gameplay. If you do want to play Demo Man at his potential, you will have to learn how to use your Sticky Bomb Launcher not only for traps, but for immediate damage output. You may have noticed that high level players nearly exclusively use the sticky bomb launcher. So why is this? Well firstly the traps and the area denial are completely invaluable to your gameplay. But also on top of this the sticky bomb launcher provides more reliable damage output even in 1v1 situations. Here's a great quote I found from an invite level medic that I found helped to explain why exactly this is the case. You'll be able to get away with pipes at a low level but at higher levels you'll encounter players who will dodge your four pipes and push your face. Putting that sticky in between gives you so much flexibility and space to work with. The two main reasons I see the sticky bomb launcher as being more reliable than pipes in many but not all situations is that one you have a larger clip size and two you can simply miss. You don't have to get a direct hit like you do with the pipe because it will stick to the floor and you can still detonate. Whereas with the grenade launcher, if you miss, very often that damage is completely thrown away. I would argue that the sticky bomb launcher is the most versatile weapon in TF2. There is so much depth and nuance to this weapon and the combination of your stickies and pipes are simply devastating, providing you with the most damage output of all classes. In this video, we break down some real examples where possible. And as I say, we're gonna be talking about direct combat only. To learn more about the Demo Man, see my previous 101 videos from this series. Just bear in mind for this video, we're going to be really focusing on the Sticky Bomb Launcher. We're going to be looking at the following topics. There's a lot to cover, so I really hope you enjoy this video. Let's crack on. So let's start off with what I'm calling the five fundamental mechanics of the Sticky Bomb Launcher. Now I'm not a big fan of videos that just simply list off wiki articles, so I'm going to try and make this brief and try and add my own insights. There are of course more stats and game mechanics that you can learn about, but these are the five that I think are the most important to have an understanding of, and the ones that I think affect your gameplay the most. First of all we have the 0.7 second arm time. This is really important to get a feel for, it will affect your aim, especially at close quarters when you might not be able to detonate as quickly as you would like. Next up we have the offset aim, so stickies and most projectiles don't land directly on the crosshair at close range, because the projectile comes from the right hand side of your view model. This is fairly negligible at long range, but at close range it makes a huge difference, especially when you're laying down stickies very accurately. A great example is if you're wanting to do a sticky jump off the edge of a doorway, if I aim directly at the doorway, the blast won't affect me, whereas if I aim a bit to the left, I can get the sticky bomb exactly where I want it. The good news is that this very quickly becomes second nature, and if you're new to Demo Man, very soon you won't have to think about this at all. Next up we have the fire angle, or the trajectory. It's important to know that the height at which you aim affects drastically where your sticky is going to land. Often it's very useful to flick your aim up to get your stickies a little bit further without having to charge them up. The damage ramp up and fall off is a little bit more complex, but still definitely worth getting your head around. First of all, the standard damage fall off applies to the Demo Man, so that the further you are from your stickies, the less damage they do. Typically in an average game, you might find that you're doing 50 to 100 damage at approximately mid range. However, there's another layer of complication because after 5 seconds, this damage fall off is removed. So that if you've set a trap and you've been patient and you're standing on the other side of the map, you can still do a huge amount of damage. Finally, it's worth being aware that some surfaces do not allow your projectiles to stick to them. One of the most notable examples is of course the cart. This includes the payload on Frontier as well, or you may have noticed the end of payload maps. A couple of examples that really do affect your gameplay quite a lot are at the end of Bad Water, where you have a very clearly marked out square that you can't stick bombs to, and at the very top on the last round of Thunder Mountain, this entire surface is also non-stick. 
So yeah, this is worth bearing in mind because it will affect how you play and where you place your sticky bombs and occasionally it can even be used in your advantage. Okay, so now we've gone over some of the basic mechanics, let's take a look at some tips and let's take a look at some real examples to help illustrate these concepts. These are all the topics we're gonna cover. So first of all, let's take a look at aiming. The first thing I wanted to say about this is you have to aim way ahead, sometimes more so than you might think. Aim is very often just muscle memory, but occasionally, as a demo man, you have to kind of go beyond that and get inside your opponent's mind and think about exactly where they might be going next. It's often not just a matter of a fraction of a second later, but actually several steps forward, what's the route they're taking, throwing a sticky there so you can get it right on target. Let's look at a very simple example to illustrate this point. Here I'm on Badlands and I see this soldier. I'm just gonna pause it here so you can see how far ahead I'm aiming to get this sticky right on target. It's not too dissimilar to the soldier, but in my experience, sometimes you just have to think a tiny bit further in advance to make sure they're directly over the sticky when you detonate. And because of the arm time we talked about earlier, this also applies to short range as well as long range. And that's where aiming differs from the soldier, the soldier being able to aim directly at the enemy's feet at mid to close range. A demo man can't do that, they really have to continue to predict where the enemy's gonna go next to try and get out the maximum amount of damage. Another big part of aiming is figuring out what the enemy's escape route is and aiming your stickies in that location. You can normally tell when someone is going to retreat if they're low on health, if they have less numbers than your team. So you can kind of get those stickies in deep behind the enemy and whilst they're retreating, detonate to finish them off. Bear in mind that if they're retreating directly backwards, you will have to charge your sticky bomb launcher perhaps more than you think. Here's a couple of great examples to demonstrate exactly what I mean. This first one on bad water, I notice there's a sniper just inside this room. So as I head in, I spot that he's on the right hand side of the room. So notice how I aim to the left of him because I know that very likely he's gonna want to retreat and head to those windows. Another good example here on Swiftwater, there's a bunch of enemies outside of our spawn doors. Notice where I'm shooting these sticky bombs. I'm not aiming directly at their feet. They've got an Uber. There's no point in doing that. I'm aiming for the choke point behind them and for their only escape route, which I know they're gonna to wanna to take when the Uber finishes and when our team starts to push back. A few other things regarding aim that are worth mentioning. It's very common to aim directly at your feet for very close encounters. You're very likely to use a similar technique if you're getting bombed by a soldier as well. If you know they're heading directly for your location, the best thing you can often do is put a sticky at your feet and then move in an unexpected direction so that you can debt when they land and perhaps finish them off with another sticky or a pipe. Next up, let's talk about line of sight. The arc of the demo man's projectile is one of his greatest advantages over other classes. Often you can avoid line of sight altogether and still dish out that damage. You should constantly be trying to utilize corners and objects as cover, avoiding line of sight where possible because this will put pretty much every other class at a disadvantage. This technique is particularly strong against heavies who don't have that mobility to reposition to shoot back at you. An object I very commonly use for cover is in fact the cart itself, and often you can dance around it, avoiding the enemy fire while still dishing out damage with your sticky bomb launcher. Also, the sticky bomb launcher performs surprisingly well from low ground, allowing you to get damage into nooks and crannies that you may not necessarily be able to see. You can shoot onto ledges and through windows and take out camping enemies or completely demolishing NG bases. Being able to fight from the low ground is another great advantage over the soldier, whose rocket launcher, when shooting upwards at high ground, is almost never going to work. But a sticky bomb with the arc of the projectile will fall back down and grip onto a surface, allowing you to detonate and dish out damage. So if a soldier has the high ground and is shooting down at you, you can still possibly challenge him. Finally, if you have the high ground and you're engaging from a very high angle, then again, the sticky bomb launcher will very often be the better option as opposed to your grenade launcher. And I've got a couple of very good examples to explain why. So let's take a look at this footage here. I'm on upward and I'm shooting down onto these guys here. This first sticky, I aim at the heavy and I'm just a fraction of hitting him directly. If that was a pipe, it would roll off harmlessly into the distance. But because it's a sticky, it's right next to his feet and I can detonate and still dish out some damage. This same idea applies to if you want to bomb the enemy. So in this example here, we're on Thunder Mountain. I notice some snipers in the distance and I think I can take them out. 
So as I jump into them, I lay down two stickies, which allows me to get out some really reliable damage. If I was to use the pipes, sure, they're quite stationary. I probably could have hit them, but if I did miss, I could potentially do no damage, and there's no need to take that risk in this situation. Often a really good technique is to use a combination of the sticky bomb launcher and the pipes, but we're not going to go into that today. We'll save that for another video. The Demon Man can be quite vulnerable in close quarter combat. For this reason, you should constantly be using what I call precautionary traps to help protect your back. The idea is to simply constantly be laying the odd sticky bomb in strategic locations to cover popular pathways of the map, and this is to help prevent enemies sneaking up on you or ambushing you or what have you. This has become second nature for me and has saved me countless times. The best locations are pretty much where you'd put normal traps, corners are ideal, anywhere where you can't see into the distance and where the enemy could appear at a moment's notice. Here's a very quick example on Gold Rush. I'm jumping in as I grab this health. I put a sticky bomb down here. Now, it may look like I've seen this pyro, but in fact, I haven't. I'm just putting the sticky bomb down to cover this pathway. The moment I notice him, I jump back, detonate the sticky, and I'm able to finish him off fairly easily. If I hadn't done that, there's a good chance he would have killed me. Another example here on Thunder Mountain, I've just popped a sticky bomb down right on that corner just in case anyone comes around, a pyro, a scout, and in this case an engineer just falls from the ceiling, and again I'm able to kill him really easily, possibly not the biggest threat ever, but if it was a pyro around that corner, it would just help with the fight and would give me the upper hand that I need in any close quarter combat. Another version of this same concept is to leave a trail of stickies behind you which can work really well in corridors. This makes it very difficult for you to be snuck up on and can be great for games where you've been having a lot of trouble with the spy, maybe they keep camping around corners, they keep following you and taking you out. Even if the trail doesn't actually kill them, having them there can make them feel really uncomfortable but it might just allow you to spin around, spot him, detonate and help you finish them off. Finally, as another precaution, you should get into the habit of pre-charging your sticky bomb launcher. Now this could have been an entire tip on its own, but I thought it kind of related to the idea of precaution and being prepared. But essentially, before you see an enemy, before you come around a corner, you should be charging your sticky bomb launcher and having it ready so you can apply more immediate damage output at range. A fully charged sticky bomb travels at approximately 230% the speed of a regular one and of course goes considerably further. By getting into the habit of charging up a shot ready for when you come around a corner, it allows you to immediately apply pressure to a sniper, perhaps jolting their aim, or finish off a retreating enemy, or simply just have a quicker presence in the fight. A great example here on Gold Rush, I'm heading up to the battlements, and notice this is when I start charging my weapon, so that by the time I get to here, I'm already at about two thirds charge, and I can look for an enemy player, and wherever they happen to be, I can very likely get a sticky bomb right over to them, and in this case I see a retreating soldier, and I'm able to finish them off quite easily. Area control is a massively powerful part of the Demoman's repertoire. The Sticky Bomb Launcher allows you to completely block off or restrict areas of the map, giving yourself and your team a huge advantage. This technique is less about trying to kill the enemies, but instead using your stickies as a deterrent. This is of course particularly effective on tight areas of the map at chokes and of course near objectives. By blocking or restricting the enemy's movement, it gives your team more space and more time to do the things that they need to do. And sometimes just simply one sticky is enough to put a team off pushing around a corner or moving forward into you, as you can see in this footage here. You've seen quite a lot of examples of this in the background already, but here's one I'll briefly talk through. Again, I'm on Thunder Mountain. I see this soldier with some fancy gear on the left here, so he's probably quite a good player. So what I want to do is try and block these players off into that corridor, put stickies down so they've got something to think about. But as I start to push the car, again, just laying down stickies at that doorway, trying my best to keep the enemy away as I push the car to the final control point. In this case, I wasn't aiming directly at the enemies, I was making a wall between me and them to give me and my team more space and time to do the objective. So fight control is a term I'm using for a bunch of different techniques. There's gonna be a lot of ideas here, some of which are quite similar to area control, but on a smaller scale, and I use more for a 1v1 situation. There are loads of ways in which you can use the sticky bomb launcher to help you guide the fight that you are in. For example, you can reduce the enemy's space, block off their escape route, force them to fight you, guide them into your pipes, guide them into your allies, control health packs, 
and much more. There are loads of little split decisions you make with your Sticky Bomb Launcher to help guide the fight you're in, and I find that a lot of these ideas work well when you're dealing with scouts because of their very low health pool, they're very reluctant to take damage, and also they're very quick and they're keen to get up close and personal with you, so being able to control that, slow them down, guide them in certain directions is a great way to help win the fight. A couple of very quick examples here. In this game I'm battling a scout, I notice he runs to the right into this corner and so what I'm going to do is immediately try and block off his escape route, corner him in, restrict his movement and so I'm able to finish him off quite easily. A second very simple example on Badlands that illustrates exactly how powerful just a single sticky can be. I come around this corner, I notice a scout coming towards me, I immediately put a sticky bomb between me and him and now I know I have some control over this area. I know there are places he can go and there are places he can't go so I'm feeling a lot more confident but in this situation he just happens to back off to live to fight another day. Another great way to control a fight is when you can juggle the enemy in the air, something you can do with any explosive class, which can really give you the upper hand. By momentarily taking away that control, it allows you to predict the second shot much more accurately to help you dominate that 1v1 situation. I often find that juggling with a sticky bomb and finishing off with a pipe can be a great combination. Again, we may look at this in a future video. One final thing to bear in mind is that if you do mispredict the enemy, you've laid down a sticky bomb, you thought they were going to go one way, but they go the complete other way, then save that sticky bomb. Leave it where it is, have it at the back of your mind, ready to use if you need it. Only detonate when you have to and when it's going to deal damage. Because very often, that bomb that you put down five or ten seconds ago can become really useful again later in the fight. Here's one more piece of footage I'm going to talk over. We're on Hoodoo and I'm pushing on to the last part of the map. So my first sticky is completely missed, but I'm not going to detonate that yet. I'm going to leave that there because you never know someone might come around that corner. My second sticky, he's wise to it, he strafes away. Again, I'm going to leave that there and now I feel like I've got a huge amount of control over this area of the map. In the end, this demo man does decide to retreat and so I'm able to simply detonate that previous bomb I had, which is waiting there and take him out very easily. As the saying goes, some people have a very bad habit of shooting a sticky bomb and immediately detonating. But try to avoid doing that. Make sure that you're aware of every single sticky bomb you put down and where it is so you can be as effective as possible. And one final great tip for this section, when you're faced with a medic and their pocket, sometimes by laying a sticky in between them, you can split them up and force them to disconnect that beam. And this will allow you to deal with each player individually, making the task much easier. Okay, so let's finish with a few quick tips that didn't quite fit under any of the previous categories. These are a bit less about combat, but are still incredibly useful. First of all, you can use the hit sound to determine the location of enemies. Generally speaking, turning on hit sounds gives you an incredible advantage because it allows you to better understand if and when you're dealing damage. But on top of that, you can also lay your stickies at corners, throw them into a room to help you find out if there are enemies about. You can also check for enemy stickies by shooting your own sticky next to them. They'll fall off the wall that they're connected to. And finally, of course, you can use your sticky bomb launcher to clear enemy stickies, which is particularly useful when facing enemy demos who are using some of the area control techniques we talked about earlier to restrict your movement or deny an objective or choke point. And remember, the quickie bomb launcher and Scottish resistance take it one step further, allowing you to actually destroy enemy stickies entirely. So there we have it guys, this was my 101 guide for the Sticky Bomb Launcher and using it in direct combat. I hope you enjoyed this video, let me know your thoughts in the comments below, are there any tips that I missed, any techniques that you use that you'd like to share, I'd love to hear from you, or if you have any ideas for future 101 guides, again I'd love to hear your thoughts. As always, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.